Almost three months. Ah, uh, what do you mean? No, you're right on time. You brought me something. You can't move anything across interspace other than information. What? Ha ha what do I say to this? Um, where are we? Rup, why does your brain look this way? Spider-Man cartoon maker. Oh, great. What an enlightening answer that was. Okay, um, Spider-Man cartoon maker was a computer game published in 1995 by Knowledge Adventure Games. This publisher created a huge amount of edutainment computer software in the 90s, including the Mario Typing series. Oh, yeah, the Mario Typing series, of course the most popular of the Mario games. Yeah, I guess. Anyway, uh, you called this a cartoon maker? Also a game, but it was published by a software company that specialized in education. Yeah, in summary, it was a borderline unusable cartoon maker that was somehow genuinely fun enough to be considered a game. And as far as education, well, it definitely challenges the mind in ways. Oh, gosh, yeah. Um, okay, so what am I seeing here? Is this the 90s Spider-Man animated series? That's the one where uh, Christopher Daniel Barnes voices Peter Parker, right? Oh, he lends his voice to this program. To hear what each button does, click on it with the right mouse button. Keep that button down until you have heard enough. Click here to choose some swinging stamps. <laughs> okay, yeah, that's pretty cool. How is it supposed to work? It's not really an animation program, it's more like a paint program that records your workspace as you add elements. There's no timeline, so every placement becomes part of the final animation, and cannot be removed without starting over. The user must have a perfect knowledge of the library of assets and a meticulous plan for their story in order to make a coherent final product. Yeah, that sounds like something a child would definitely not struggle with. Precisely. However, the audio elements along with the animated character sprites did make it oddly enjoyable to plaster the screen with random stuff. Like most software from this era, Spider-Man Cartoon Maker seems to capture a uniquely obtuse environment for creative ideation. In other words, it's a sensory playground. Those who used it as a child likely have these sounds and visuals seared into their minds. Yeah. You know, it's funny you say that. I still remember the rattling sound of that broken wrench you had me play with as a kid. Eventually it stopped making noise, something must have gotten stuck, but, um, anyways. Surely with enough practice you could make a passable animation, right? I mean, these background elements and sprites look good enough. Good is relative. There are several example animations made by the creators of this software that are meant to serve as demonstrations of its capabilities. Some are even voiced by Christopher Daniel Barnes. If it's an original narration, that would make it like, I don't know, like a lost episode of the TV show. I, I'd love to see one, Rook. Let's see if it's any good.
not nice to rob banks in Mr. Spider-Man's neighborhood. What's happening to me? Am I going crazy? The Black Widow Spider Slayer? But I destroyed that thing. What's it doing here? Huh? What am I doing in a jungle? Craven the Hunter? Don't tell me you're the party animal behind all this. Hey, come back here! Great! Now I'm hunting the hunter! What the? How'd we get back to the city? Yo! Wrong way! Oh, just nifty. I'm underwater. But spiders can't swim! J. Jonah Jameson. Well, this figures. I always thought you had the instincts of a shark, the brains of a guppy, and no soul. Get it? No soul? Like the fish soul? Well, never mind. So tell me, fish lips, are you the flounder behind all this? Oh, no. My superhero career is going down the drain. Outer space? I really must be losing my mind. Or having a nightmare. Nightmare? Wait a minute, that's it! Listen up! If you think you're gonna fool me, forget it! This is all just an illusion! I know who you are and how you're doing all this! And I'm not afraid of you! Come on out of hiding! Come out and face me, Mysterio! I figured that you were the only one who could create nightmare illusions like the ones I was seeing. It was you and your holographic technology. I'll bet you even tricked me into thinking I had no webbing. Ha! Just as I suspected. I have plenty. But this ought to hold you until the police show up. Adventure. I'm gonna go home and get some sleep, and I only want to have sweet dreams. No more nightmares. Okay, I did love that, but if I had made it, I would have been too embarrassed to share it with others, so my sense is that it was a lot more fun to just make the dumbest animation you could and show your friends, or otherwise mess around. Which sounds pretty good, actually. I bet it sold well. It sold well enough to get a follow-up, the X-Men Cartoon Maker. It was effectively the exact same software, with X-Men assets instead of Spider-Man ones. Interestingly, if you installed both games on a single machine, they would combine into one program, with the full libraries of the X-Men and Spider-Man version merged into one. Oh. <laughs> okay, that's actually pretty cool. They were like two games that also served as expansions to one another. That's kind of ahead of its time, actually. This is really interesting, Roop. I'm surprised I'd never heard of it before. It's right up my alley. Oh, there's something else? What? Well, how are you doing this? This? This is a menu. <laughs> this is amazing. What game is this? Spider Man Interactive Comic Book. 
Wait, wait, so this isn't even a game, it's just a scan of a comic book on a CD-ROM? What's the point of that? The artwork makes it look like a crazy fighting game or something. You've got Iron Man, Human Torch, Red Skull, Wolverine, Cyclops. I mean, Spider-Man isn't even center stage here. I'm not disappointed, it's just... Stan Lee's in this? He's got... Well, what, what, what did he say? Poor, poor, friendly neighborhood Spider-Man. As if it isn't bad enough that his Aunt May is ill, and he's having a problem with lovesick Betty Brandt, he's also got not one, but two deadly, grotesque goblins to worry about. And even when we finally get to see the Green Goblin unmasked, if you think that's the end of old Webhead's troubles, think again. Because here comes the most horrible, horrific supervillain of all, the hair-raising, spine-tingling Hobgoblin. Oh, we did it all for you, right here on this one great CD. So what are we waiting for? Let's go! All right. I admit, he makes it sound pretty good. Leave it to Stan to sell us on a good story. What issue is it? Amazing Spider-Man numbers 238 and 239. However, two additional comics can be found. Numbers 39 and 40. What do you mean found? Difficult to explain. This software tries very hard to justify its own existence by making the comic book feel as interactive as possible. So interspersed throughout the reader are three icons. One for sound effects, One for animations. Hey! Help! Damn him! Don't let him get away! Hey, sorry, pal. I'm a wrestler, not a cop. And one for context. The context buttons bring the viewer to an earlier comic that provides context to the current story. Oh, okay, yeah, yeah, I remember these now. This is a classic. It's the introduction of the Hobgoblin. In 39, that's when the Green Goblin learned that Spider-Man was Peter Parker. It makes sense that they'd choose these stories. These four issues are really spread out in release, but they're very interconnected narratively. It was definitely an interesting attempt to get new readers into comic books. Christopher Daniel Barnes also provides voice work for this program. He summarizes every page with a narration. The narration is less detailed than the written text, but still adequate to convey the story, making it perfect for users not yet old enough to read comic books themselves. The narration also softens some of the more mature aspects of the story. The stranger pours over the goblin's arsenal, the explosive fury of the pumpkin bombs, the lethal touch of the high-voltage sparkle blaster, and the awesome might of the goblin's powerful jet glider. That's pretty nice, actually. For younger kids, it must have felt like a parent was reading to them, and they could enjoy the pictures. And I'm guessing the older kids could turn the narration off if they wanted to. And I love that zoom animation. The animated segments were ripped straight from the 90s series, albeit meticulously selected to fit into the context of the unrelated comic book story being told and the sound effects were likely just pulled from generic stock libraries. They're things like explosions, energy blasts, glass breaking, etc. Okay, that makes a lot of sense, but honestly, any excuse to hear Mark Hamill's Hobgoblin is worthwhile. And these illustrations are just legendary. I mean, his face especially is so well designed. There is a very specific mood captured in the pulpy pages of a comic book. It feels somehow enhanced within the confines of this programming relic, a moment in time truly distilled. To finish out the interactive aspects, the main menu also includes a somewhat extensive character bio section, which gives a brief rundown on characters from all four of the included issues, each with their own unique music. Wow, 
Yes, that was definitely music. I guess really specific wiki pages weren't a thing yet, so those bios were probably pretty helpful to new readers, actually. I saw something else on the main menu. Is that a trivia minigame? It is, however, it's trivia pertaining very specifically to the issues included in the software. It is not general Spider-Man trivia so much as a reading comprehension test. That's pretty funny, actually. Anything to pass the time, right? Give the kids a reading assignment and then a test. They're going to love that. It's kind of a shame that they didn't do this with more comics. It's not a bad way to experience a classic issue, and... It feels like watching Star Wars on Laserdisc or something like that. There's a purity to it. Like the cartoon maker, there was an X-Men interactive comic book as well, but unfortunately neither really attempts to capture a substantial archive. Both bits of software are one-offs, likely made due to the popularity of the two animated shows. Huh. It's really interesting to see how the hunger for more superhero content was answered before folks started cranking out the movies. I know there were some video games as well from back then, but I wish there was something a bit more, I don't know, unique. The video games I've seen from this era were beat-em-ups with a few blocks of text to bridge together levels. The comic reader and cartoon maker are so interesting because they're experimenting with their medium in a big way, you know? Imagine an original, story-driven Spider-Man game from this era, right? Like Insomniac with a sliver of the technology, a fraction of the budget, and probably a far less defined understanding of what a Spider-Man story is. Wouldn't that be something? Oh, uh, bye, Roop. And I never forget, don't worry. <laughs> Thanks, old man. Alright, let's check this data. Wait a minute, what? Spider-Man and the Sinister Six. Roop didn't... Is this a game? It's playable. How did he make it... I guess he left this one for me to check out solo. You can cease to amaze me any day now, Rube. I'm still waiting.